Today I'm going to do a quick impromptu video on how to install a Moen 1222 um, shower valve. Uh, let me show you uh, the pitfalls that I've gone through and the reason why I decided to do this quick little impromptu video. Alright, so the housing on the outside um, has a little pin that you're supposed to be able to slide out. It's difficult, but uh, uh, it, it, you can get it out. Basically what I did in my case was I just put a piece of pair of needle nose pliers in there and I, I pried it up and it came out. But um, you're supposed to be able to slide this up and then the, uh, the housing will pull out. You should be able to pull it out of this little thing, right? Well, it didn't. It broke off, sheared completely, and now I'm like, oh, well, how am I gonna get that out, right? So I just wanna share with, uh, with y'all what my solution was on that so when when you're trying to replace one of these uh, Moen valves and it breaks off when you're trying to pull it out, um, the most important thing, the worst case scenario would be that you have to replace this whole um, jacket. Uh, and that means, you know, going to the back and tearing out the wall. And, and in my case, these are sweated on, so you'd have to do some soldering. Not to, That's not at all what you want to do. You don't want to um, damage the inside of this when you're trying to jack that out. So what I did in my case, is I used uh, a soldering iron and I ran my soldering iron in there and I melted it away. Um, uh, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so first thing you need to do is you need to pull the, the metallic components out. They have a little rubber or a, a plastic thing here. You're able to get uh, a pair of needle nose in there and I just you just pull this out. And that leaves you with a sleeve that it goes all the way to the back. And here you can see what I did was, I, it was in there like this, and I, I ran um, my soldering iron along the, the, the side of the wall right here, and I melted away the thinnest part of, um, of this, this little jacket. It's the thinnest part back here, until I was able to pull these two down, grab it, and yank it out. Now, the reason why this was stuck, uh, you would think, oh, scale. Well, it wasn't scale. Um, you can see a little piece of this little rubber gasket on the side here. Um, but on the, on the cold water side, you can see how that rubber gasket got swollen. And so when it got swollen, there's no way you're going to pull that out. Um, inside, inside there, you can see there's a little slot. That's where the water comes in. And when this rubber, this little rubber jacket does like a ratcheting action. You can see it was it was catching on that. There's there's absolutely no way you're going to get that out. So this is something that I imagine happens often enough that uh, if you have one of these, you, you probably have your. That's why you're looking at this video. Is you need to know why it was stuck, and it was because this piece of rubber gets stuck in that hole back in there, and you can't pull that out. There's nothing. I mean. You could try to turn it 90 degrees, but you know it, it's just not going to turn. But in order to turn it 90 degrees, it has to come forward because it gets it's stuck in this little groove here, right? So if you can pull it forward a quarter inch, but you can't, it's a it's a catch 22. You gotta you gotta get it past this in order to be able to turn it 90 degrees. So that's that's the onus. That's the reason why we're doing this. Um, you know the valve needs to be replaced periodically. Um, if you have one of these, you should do it sooner than later because it only, it's only going to get harder. This rubber gasket is what's going to keep you from, from pulling that thing out. So, what are we going to do to install this? First of all, I want to I wanna remark, uh, you can see my little uh, um, tin foil uh, funnel here. Uh, when you're pulling it out, uh, once you get those gaskets to break their seal, air will go up in the line and then whatever's in the line will come rushing out. You want that to rush out and not go into the wall. So that's why I got this little this little funnel here. It'll make shift, but it works. So you've seen it here first, so get it ready before you do it. <laughs> you don't have to run around trying to find out how to how to channel that water um, when you get to that point. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna clean this out. If you put your finger up in there, you can feel there is a lot of scaling in there. And although we were very careful not to uh, scratch it when we were extracting it, uh, using only brass, and uh, in in the case of uh, you know the reason why we did the um, the soldering iron was that we didn't want to 
you didn't want to damage that and the, it it won't melt but the plastic will so that that was a perfect scenario uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little chore boy here I've cut a finger sized piece I'm going to run it on my finger and I've got some uh, some CLR see CLR is really great for that because it oxidizes all that scale and we're going to spray that up in there I'm going to run the chore boy in there and we're going to get this all nice and clean so let's get that cleaned out and then I'll take a picture of afterwards Quick note, be cautious of these uh, jagged edges, if you have jagged edges, even if you don't. Um, tile work, when it's, when it's cut, it's basically shards of glass right here. <laughs> and you can see, I did cut myself, so it's a project. <laughs> so be cautious, wear gloves if you want, but you know, I'd like to work with my naked fingers when I'm doing stuff where I need to, you know, rub on stuff, so. Um, if you feel like using gloves, don't worry about it. Just be careful for these rough edges. All right, so I showed you my little uh, funnel thing to have a piece of uh, aluminum foil ready before you start the project. Um, another thing that you need in preparation is a uh, is a spritzer. We're gonna we're gonna clean out that CLR because I don't want to you know straight away uh, put any stress on that uh, on those rubber components. So what you need is a little spritzer. This is something that we use on the ironing board. But uh, you know, set it to spray. You're not. You can't turn the water on. So <laughs> you got to be prepared for that. So um, you know, clean all that out and put that funnel to good use. Here you go. The hot water comes in from that side, and the cold water comes in from that side, or vice versa, and it mixes it up and it sends it out that hole on the bottom. And get that all nice and cleaned out so that everything seals. All right, so here you can see this is the, the new unit. And you can see this, the state of these uh, little rubber uh, sleeves that go along the side of it. And here's a comparison, what, what they look like when they get swollen. You can see that this one, it turns into like a, like a ratchet. There's no way you're going to pull those out. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, so what happens is, can you see there's a little groove? I'm going to get right up in there. A little groove forms right here, right at the edge where the, the valve meets up with the hole. And, uh, and so that makes it so that it can't fit. Well, even if you slide it past, this right here is so big it's not, it's not going to come out. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing together. Um, the next step with uh, installing this is to get some lubricant on there. Now, this kit comes with this uh, Moen part number 141070, this uh, rubber lube. And we're going to put this lube all over all of the rubber components. There we go. That's going to protect those. As we slide them in, even on the rubber, on the O-rings here, we're going to slather that on there too, so those O-rings don't have any uh, any issue. Kind of odd that there's not an O-ring down here, but I guess it doesn't really need to be. Where's it going to leak, right to the back? <laughs> um, anyway, we're just going to drip this thing and get it nice and gooey. Make sure that none of the rubber is dry. All right, now. See where it says HC? That's going to end up in, in, in the top up here. I'm going to slide this baby in there. It's going to cooperate, right? Or not. Boy. I guess we got some more cleaning to do. We're going to clean this up just a little more and see if we can get this to work right. All right, so there you go. It's all in place. Now they give you this. I don't know if you can see where am I at. <laughs> they give you this little tool. It's an apparatus to help you to manipulate this uh, interface here. It fits on like this and just kind of goes in there. Um, the instructions say not to twist it. However, once you get this little dealie on there, it gives you the ability to, you know, put a little bit of pressure on it, and and you can probably jimmy it just a little bit back and forth. Because it's rubber, you know, you just kind of just wiggle it a little bit. You don't want to twist it, but just a little bit of a wiggle and it'll keep things going. 
it's very difficult. It's very tight. Um, and I'm just going to tell you, a little bit of jiggling. Uh, I did put some more of that lube in, and, and I, I put the lube on the inside on the sleeve as well to make sure it was all very well lubed up. But it's in place. The next thing to go on is that pin, which goes right in that little slot right there. And there you go. Got my little pin in there. Everything's in. You can see the little brackets coming down, holding it in place. Um, at this point, you can turn the wire back on and uh, give it a test to make sure that there's no leaking. Um, the, so, so just to review, um, when you want to take one of these out, the you need to go to re get the replacement, and the replacement will come with this little tool. You can put this tool on here, and you're supposed to be able to turn this 45 degrees, and um, it will it'll ride on these little cams, supposed to, ride up on these little cams and pull itself out. Well, in my case, that didn't happen. It didn't work, um, and so we ended up torquing it, and, uh, and it broke. It snapped off. And so when that happens, it's not the end of the world. Uh, my solution was to get my soldering iron out, and I ran um, the hot soldering iron along the thinnest portion of the walls uh, to the point where I could collapse the top and the bottom with a pair of pliers and pull it out. And the reason why that gets stuck is because of that, um, that rubber sheath getting stuck into the brass component back here. The most important thing is, when you're trying to take this out, is not to score or scratch or damage the inside of that sleeve. Um, and so that's why we used um, the, uh, the soldering iron instead of something that would have scratched it if I'd used a, a drill or some other kind of a, a power tool or something. Uh, so so that's, the, that's the deal. Um, how to uh, repair a failed installation of a Moen shower valve. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it saved you a little bit of grief. Um, Subscribe if it did. Otherwise, share it with someone who, who needs the information. There you go. Have a good day.